JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 7th. I am Harold Ambos Pistoros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session on Tuesday. It gained versus NZD, AUD, and GBP in that order, while it slightly underperformed against the CAT, CHF, and the Euro. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the JPY. Now, the performance in the FX world paints a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, and thus, in order to clear things up, we prefer to turn our gaze to the, to the, the equity world. Here, major, major European stock indices traded in the, in the green with a positive morale rolling into the Asian session uh, today. The only exception was South Korea's KO, KOSPI, which uh, slid 0.5%. Uh, Wall Street uh, stayed closed uh, yesterday in celebration of, uh, of the Labor Day. The driver behind the robust performance of the equity market lately may have been reduced expectations that the Fed uh, could start its quantitative uh, easing tapering process as early as this month. Remember that uh, in his Jackson Hole speech, Fed Chair Powell maintained a cautious stance, refraining from providing clear signals with regards to when they may begin tapering and added that he wants to avoid chasing transitory inflation and potentially discouraging jobs uh, growth in the process. Then, on Friday, the US employment report came to add some credence to that view, with the NFPs slowing to 235,000 from an upwardly revised 1,053k. We believe that uh, announcing and uh, beginning the tapering process in September may now be off, uh, off the table, but we still, uh, we, we still do see, uh, we still see chances for an official uh, announcement in November and the formal start in December. In other words, we still see the case for tapering to begin before the end of the year, as many policymakers suggested. Nonetheless, this will most likely depend on upcoming uh, on upcoming inflation and employment data. The next employment report is scheduled for October 8th and may prove determinant as to when and how the Fed will execute its uh, policy plans. For now, we do expect the risk uh, sentiment to stay supported and equities to drift higher, as a delayed tapering could mean delayed rate hikes and thereby lower borrowing costs for companies for longer. At the same time, the US dollar could stay under selling interest. Now, today, during the, Asia, uh, during the Asian session, we had uh, an RBA monetary policy decision. The bank uh, indeed proceeded to, with the plan tapering from 5 billion ounces to 4 billion ounces uh, per week, but it delayed the date for a new review from November 2021 to February 2022 due to a delay in the, in the economic recovery and increased uncertainty associated with the outbreak of the Delta coronavirus variant. As for our interest rates, officials stuck to their guns that uh, they are likely to keep them at present levels at least until 2024. Remember that this was the scenario we saw as uh, most likely as we thought the bank will refrain, f will refrain from appearing indecisive over its, um, with regards to its uh, past guidance. The OZ spiked higher initially, perhaps as some participants were anticipating officials to discard their tapering plans uh, today. However, proceeding with, um, with uh, what was announced back in July and delaying the review is far from a hoggish outcome. It suggests that the RBA plans to stay accommodative for longer. 
Maybe that's how participants interpreted the decision soon thereafter, as the local currency gave back all the initial gains and traded even lower against most of its major peers. Although due to a potential improved market sentiment, it is hard to predict how the Aussie will perform against every other major currency, we believe that it could resume its downtrend against uh, the Kiwi so, Kiwisoon. Uh, both are uh, risk-linked currencies and any forces from changes in the broader market sentiment are offset in the Aussie Kiwi pair. Therefore, mon monetary policy divergence may play a bigger role. Remember that while the RBA is expected to hold rates untouched until 2024, the RBNZ is expected to hit the hike button as early as at its uh, upcoming gathering. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the European session, we get the, Ge the German ZW survey for September. The current conditions index is forecast to have risen to 33 from 29.3, but the economic sentiment one is anticipated to have fallen to 30 from 40.4. Eurozone's second estimate of the employment change and the GDP for the second quarter are also coming out, but they are expected to, com to confirm their preliminary estimates. Tonight, during the Asian session Wednesday, we have Japan's GDP for the second quarter. However, this will be the second estimate and expectations are just for a small upside revision to 0.4% uh, quarter over quarter from 0.3%. Uh, uh, so that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.